Top Trader is brought to you by Sunlam iTrade. Now with transparent CFD trading on the exact JSC price. We've chosen eight lucky contestants from different walks of life to trade against each other and stand a chance to win a fantastic cash prize of a quarter of a million rand. It's early in the morning in Johannesburg and our traders have another full day of training ahead of them. Well, there's another thing that our contestants need to consider when buying or selling shares. It's called the psychology of trading. Are their decisions based on fear or are they based on overconfidence? Well, we'll find out from the experts. Sounds interesting. Let's take a look. When you actually get to push the button, what is the energy that you're going to put into the trade? When you focus on the competition and when you focus on what others are doing and their results, you're actually really taking yourself out of your own game. Instead of getting the negative feeling or the fear of failure, you actually need to sit down, take out a pen and paper and say, where did it go wrong? You have got to honour your system. You're either growing or you're dying, going backwards. So a key part of your journey through top trader is also to grow yourselves as people. Traders need to keep their clients happy. Group Development Manager from Glacier, Neil Sinclair, is here to lecture you on what to look out for when risk profiling for a client's specific needs and what is the best way to invest their money. Remember, this is a very practical skill to have. So you guys are going to go off to your lecture now. I hope not dressed like this. Is this your Sunday casual look? Hmm? Yeah. Suit up from the boots up, guys. You're all vying for the spot for CNBC's top trader. You can all do investments for yourself, but what happens when you need to put an investment together for somebody else? Risk profiling is crucial. Your investor that you're putting this together for has an expectation. You guys are very familiar with market risk. What is market risk? It's the volatility of the market up and down, and without the volatility, you guys can't do what you do. Inflation risk. You retire with a pot of money or you can no longer work but you have a pot of money. That person's background is critical. Always think about where they come from, what are their expectations, what other circumstances are spread around that background. Income will tell you a lot about uh, expectations, what to do for the investor, the psychology of the investor that you're dealing with. Try to gauge, is the person level-headed? If you can identify an objective, you can create a risk profile and an investment suitable for that objective. The more information you gather from those people about the objectives on the investment are critical and it'll save you a lot of pain and tears at the end of the day. Well now it's time for our contestants to put all that theory into practice. We have a panel discussion with a potential investment customer. So let's see if they listened in the lecture and let's see who comes up with the best advice. Hi. Hi there. My name is Clement. Hi Clement, I'm Jason. Hi. Good meeting you. You too. So yeah, normally this would take a couple of hours, but I think we've been limited to five minutes. I want a profile of uh, what, what kind of what, like the investor the, that you are. I'm a soccer player. Okay. Uh, I play for a Premier Soccer League. The only thing I know about football is that it's on TV. So what's your investment goal? I would like to retire comfortably. So your income? Uh, 100,000 rand per month. 100,000? That's great, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but you receive a flat rate yes, monthly? Yes, yes, Okay. If you're earning 100,000 Rand a month, how do you only have 14,000 in your bank account? <laughs> Where does the rest go? Would you be willing to cut down on your lifestyle in order to secure your financial future? Uh, absolutely. You yes. would? Yeah. Okay. You just know that, you've got, that your investment's in good hands and that we've foreseen the volatility to an extent. Uh, hopefully I won't, I won't lose your money, <laughs> but then I, I'm sure that I, would, I wouldn't. After all is said and done in terms of your investments, what do you want to achieve? Then it was time for them to be judged on their investment decisions by Neil, Gerard and Clement. Take 60% maybe, and then out of that 60%, I would take 80% of it, invest in foreign markets. There needed to be some sort of moderation in that investment. Why I know it starts off with 10%. What I've said here are maximum limits. 
Okay. okay, so it doesn't have to start off like that, but we do need to build a, a strong capital base for him to work off. He needs to put in a bit more than 10%. Yeah. Uh, that's a bit light, you know, with a, that big a salary. What he did well was to try and get my background. That the investment may be complex with the investor who's not a complex investor. First of all, he should pay off his credit card first. Get that out of the way, high interest costs. Then I based most of my analysis on his contract that he got to a European League. He's earning $100,000 a week which is close to $10 million a year. By the end of the two years, you would have saved $2.5 million, right? That $2.5 million converts to 25 million rand. If I don't really understand this, I need somebody to sit in front of me and take charge. So he really took charge. And currently, the only invest investment that he has is uh, savings. How much is the savings? That's what I didn't uh, get the opportunity to, to, to find out. But the South African bonds are normally at 8%. If hmm. interest rates start rising, Yes. Um, I'm talking short term interest rates. Yes. What will happen to bonds? It's also going to increase as well. But, okay, wait a minute. The price falls. Yes, that is a problem. <laughs> uh, it was a very difficult topic to try and grasp in 10, 15 minutes. Um, I think some of you had some great points, but some of you forgot some other important points altogether. But uh, overall, I'd firstly like to con congratulate Ori. I think you, you, won, uh, you won the challenge. Thank you. Um, Clem, would you like to tell him what he's won? Yes, uh, Sandam Unit Trust, uh, very, at 5,000 Rand. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and, and, uh, and I think uh, we, you can use it well. That means that they invest, invest my money on my behalf and I, I got 5,000 Rand and I could redeem it for cash if I wanted to. As the afternoon wears on, nervousness fills the air. It's time for tribunal and looking at some of the contestants' trades and the mistakes they are still making has put me in a foul mood too. I wouldn't be happy if I were you because you didn't do any trades this week. You did nothing. Yes. Why? In actuality, I was looking for trades and I realized that if, if I make a move, yeah. my portfolio will just drop right down. Well, it can, but you've got to start taking chances because you know what? Being in the middle of the pack is not going to win you this competition. And what did we say to you? He said that I must take chances. I didn't want to make a sell at any moment because I knew that it was going to kill my portfolio value. Why would the sell Why kill your portfolio? Because what if you bought something that pushed the value up? You see, that's the problem is that I, I couldn't find anything like that which will push it up in a few days. It's either a sell or a hold or a purchase. It's not a partial sale. If you have reasons for selling some, then don't you have a reason for selling the, the holding? Some shares went up a lot more than these two that you hold in, in, the, in the week of trading. Uh, your portfolio currently is 998, uh, 687 Rand. So you're just like throwing money away. No. And what's going on no, shh, now? What's going on with Discovery? I asked you about that last week. You're still hanging on to mm. that. Um, I spotted some positive divergence in Discovery, and I just think it, if I sell it off, it'll be a real loss as opposed to holding on to. You've lost 5,700 on it. Yeah. And I just think it'll be a panicked, irrational decision, and it's only 3% of my portfolio. So at what point do you panic? Um, when Not it, now. When it becomes 1% uh, of my portfolio. Well, it's still quite a chunk. Yeah, I'm focusing on concentrating my portfolio, so I've sold out in a couple of positions. And yeah, you sold three and bought two new ones, so yeah. it's not much of a consolidation. No, I, I know, I understand, but I've taken, I took, for example, a bigger position than I would have in something like a sign-off. Just from, from what I'm gathering in the market and the sentiment, there, there's, good, there's good talk about platinum. So I want to be part of it. This is despite the fact that, uh, you know, we've got 85% of the world's supply a lot of unutilized capacity, so it's all still there, uh, and the amount of, uh, of platinum that's getting reconstituted uh, from scrapped vehicles. Uh, you can use Google, you know, it's something yeah. that uh, young guys usually <laughs> quite good with. Uh, yeah. Discovery is no, just no. getting worse and um, Well, first of all, I, was, I, I went in with the mind of, of, after our conversation, of closing out that position. Jason, you appear to be just saying, I like the position. I don't see that it's going from bad to worse, and I will find reasons to justify it, rightly or wrongly. Your portfolio is at 1,064,900, so you've got some good stocks there. I think you can do better. <laughs> Solo, I'm so disappointed. Massive, massive losses this week. You're buying shares that the risk is so high. You're doing it the wrong way around. Why are you doing that? I, I really have no, 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 no answer for this thing. It doesn't look like it was a very good week for you. I, I, I bought these stocks before the, the, the US shutdown thing. It affected their resources 
Mm. Yes, dogs are very much, yeah. And you bought, you, I see you doubled up on your Anglo-American? Yes, uh, and it was before and, and I... That's, that's where you're losing a lot of money. money. Yeah. You, you're taking a bet on the, uh, the US government getting back to work yeah. very quickly. Um, uh, history doesn't uh, agree with you that, uh, you know, the last major stoppage they had went on for three weeks. Your portfolio is currently at 975, 800. Shocking, shocking week for you. It is terrible. I'm still confident that I will recover. Not panicking yet. You, you don't look at all concerned though. I am concerned. Are you? Yes. <laughs> you don't show it. Do you want tears? No, well, there will be tears if you do, if, <laughs> there will be tears if you lose the challenge tomorrow because you'll be going home. I could have took profits in, in, in BAT, but I, but I didn't. I mean, it was just, it was just a bad week. Did you have a, a profit take uh, level in mind? I had, in, it was at 540. It reached 541. I didn't take the profits. Uh, I was still, like, I didn't execute all my uh, exit strategies into the stocks. If you have profit targets, take them. It's just not taking them. It's just about, about as bad as having a selling target and not selling it and seeing bad go to worse. Pula, your portfolio is now at 978,500 and odd rand. See if you can make it for another week. Good week, Ori. Well done. Thank you. Uh, it's been good to me, so the market's been good. We're getting close to the final three, so I think now it's also a time to scale back on the trades and actually start playing tactically against the other contestants as opposed to portfolio balance. Mm. Your, your profit is almost entirely due to one stock, and that's first rand. That says you're not really winning on the diversified portfolio at the moment. Yes, I agree. Right now I have the, the financials bolstering me, but at the same time I do have industrials, I do have resources. So you're the first contestant actually playing the other contestants' portfolios? Trying to. I, mean, I don't, We don't know their, their values, but sometimes, I mean, you get the feeling where they say, I've had a very bad week, and you feel, okay, I've made money, so then I must be ahead of them in some form. So I think that's what I'm trying to assess now. Ori, your portfolio is at the moment at 1,045,600, nearly 700. It was a good week, you, you went up quite nicely. Good morning, guys, you're looking lovely and fresh. Dressed well for the occasion today, your challenge, and it's a physical challenge, and a bit of brain power needed as well. Remember everything you learnt in your lecture yesterday? Risk profiling. Well, today is very similar, because you're going to have little clues, and they're going to help you work your way through a maze. I'm going to break you up into two teams, as usual. The teams are as follows. Jason, Solofelo, and Ori, you guys are together. And Pule and Mbuso, you guys are together. Good luck. Have you got sunblock? Yes? Yes. Gonna wear that sunblock? Yeah, because I don't like this kind of roasted lobster tomato look. Alright, good luck, off you go. A brief drive to Honeydew Maze later, and the guys are all rearing to get their most physical challenge so far underway. No running. <laughs> I think we might have to run. The troll is going to keep up, so it's fine. So for your task in the maze, this will be your board, your best friend, that will help you go through. It's not about speed, so you running around hysterically and getting out first will not count. You have to answer the quiz, you have to answer all the questions, and that's how we we'll determine who has won. I just want to win, that's the thing. I actually want to win, you know. You have 90 minutes, your time starts now. And they're off. Some of them quicker than others. Let's go. Which way do we take? Okay, this is one garden. I think that's a sperm whale. That's quite specific, Ori. Uh, visual brainstorm, can you solve this? You have to form a cube. But this is only three dimensional. On a two dimensional sheet of paper. Can't spend a lot of time on this. Is, it, is this on the board? It's between A and C. Yeah. Uh, there's all clues, so there's like a little frog up there. Hidden throughout the maze are various clues that each team must uncover. Cool, let's carry on. Oh. Okay. Cool. <laughs> oh, accident. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. So it's like Fast and the Furious. There's a garden here. Garden. Well, so you have to look for an animal. Okay. Is this like a physical animal? 
Yes, Mbuso, there are wild animals roaming the maze. Five haystacks in one field, and four haystacks in another field. How many would you have if you combined them all in, a whole, in another field? If you combined them, put so them up, together. Is on a or one? one? Another dead end. Another dead end. No. This picture represents a word or a phrase. Can you solve it? MCE, MCE, MCE. Three blind mice, no eyes. Yeah, yeah. well done. E is equal to MC squared. <laughs> I don't understand this. Three blind mice. <laughs> no, no, no. We've got uh, 10 minutes I've got. You got to go through here? Ah, no, you can't. This is a dead end. No, it's not. Look, there's a gap right there. Have faith. There's another garden. What the hell? The animal. You have to figure out what it is. Let's... That is your laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a unicorn. Yes, Jason, a unicorn, because they are real. A horse, but the horse goes, yeah. <laughs> We can't be skipping everything that we find difficult to, to answer. It's like a gorilla having sex with a horse. Charming, Ori. And now let's look for animals again, eh? Have you looked in here? Have you got the snake? No. That's a real snake. No. no. <laughs> We're wasting time. Where do you see the snake? Keep looking. No? You're cold. I don't see anything. Oh wait, you're hot. I don't see no animals here. Nope. Cold again. The, the optometrist tells you you must get a pair of specs. You're like, no, it won't make me look cool. <laughs> yeah. Team Alpha stop. Should That's we come back? Yeah. Team Alpha point one. Team oh. Alpha, yeah, version two. Mr. Originality. Ah, oh, go on. Board. Maybe down on a winger. Feather. Feathers. Buzo. Yeah, what up? Go, go, man. Don't worry about me. Yeah, I got you. What the game. hell is this? Clearly something interesting. Huh? If you are facing north, in which direction is your left ear pointing? Yes. Left ear. Left ear is this one. Hmm. West. Answer the question. Why west? Okay, here ah. we go. We're at the garden. Nice. I did not know this place. Where is it? What? Oh, I know that. La Paz in Peru. Oh, you're a champion. Jason, you brown noser, you. It looks like an Inca temple or something. Where, are, where do you find Inca temples? In South America, but... I'm saying Greece. Yes, Pule, because Inca temples are quite prominent in Greece. Oh, really? Yeah. What's that? We've been here for a damn hour. It's only about half an hour. We're lost. We lost. It and says, can you count? Should we just say yes? <laughs> <laughs> he said the answer's not yet. Picture puzzle, how many pandas in the picture? I see two. I see more than that. Nine over there. Mm -hmm. Are we overthinking this? Possibly. Just because rocks form, and then it's like... Yeah, but it's drawn like there, purposely. Nine pandas. I was going to say two. Put nine. Put nine. You'll thank me. Speed does make a difference, eh, Jay? Mildly. You're not allowed to run, though. Yeah, but uh, what's a brisk walk? Not a run. I was hoping for Matt's questions. Ah, oh, man, there's nothing physical about this challenge. Go, 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 man. Let's not give up. I'm tired, man. I don't, I don't want to run. Give me that thing. Let me run around. Sure. Hey, Mbuzo, who's fit? Me or you? Huh? Who's fit? Me or you? I've got a lot of energy. I'm hyperactive. <laughs> Needless to say that in 34 degree heat, the energy doesn't last. I'm not tired. I'm just disappointed. I wish I had a chainsaw. I'll just go through all of this. I've been around the same place like 10 times. Here's my footsteps there. And then Brusso's got uh, flip-flops. <laughs> Why do I feel so damn sad? How big is this maze? Oh, uh, we, we, we're not here. Okay, now I'm confused. What is the only mammal that can be truly said to? Fly. Uh, uh, ostrich can't fly. Oh, well done, Ori. Albatross. Really? An albatross is not a mammal. What What's mammal? the only mammal that can fly? It's a mammal? No. Oh, oh. it can fly in a plane. It didn't say how it flies. A fish is not a mammal. No, no it's not, Jason. A flying squirrel. It's because you glide. He doesn't fly. He doesn't have wings. Flying squirrel. He does have, he has web no, he, he glides. But they're called flying squirrels. Yeah, but if you jump off a building, you're not flying. Let's oh! Go. A bat. B-A-T. Bat. A oh, bat? Yeah. A bat's mammal? Yeah, yeah it's a rat. It's a rodent. Yeah. I love you. <laughs>
Okay, brilliant. Good work. Cool. Bet. What are the houses that beavers build cold? That the beavers build cold. A place on the vault. A bird built a nest that a beaver builds a home. A harem. Uh, Guess the story. Do you know who they are? The story is Charlie Brown. Okay. She's actually an extra and she doesn't have a name. That's Charlie Brown. I don't know who the other chick is. The cartoon name is Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown. You can do the sniffing. Do you see? A bit licorice Cinnamon. So, and this plant's been in my face before. This is the first time you've been uh, sniffing something out of a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> I hope the winning team gets like a massage. Yeah. <laughs> Are you okay? Well, hold on. Yeah, I mean, it's tiring, but we, we've got enough left to push through. Oh, that's a crash. That's a crash. Yeah, we come this way. Damn it, this place you can get lost. That's why they call it a maze, I guess. Yeah. You don't think we did enough? Uh -uh. Results always point to feelings. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, it's opening. Yeah. Yep. Cool. cool. Alright, that's nice. Enjoy. I, I think we did a great job. Enjoy that. Damn hard. Damn hard, buddy. Oh. I'm shattered. <laughs> How is it that one? Cholo, you're heavier than you look. <laughs> yeah. 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 Look. No, you 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 pushing me like a, there was nothing on that chair, man. This would be a win of the century for me. Exhausted, our contestants head back to the hotel, knowing full well that this evening it's time for yet another elimination. As dusk rolls in, the tensions rise. The time has come to bid farewell to another contestant. But who will it be? All right, so I've got the score sheets right here. So twist of fate, that is Mbuso and Pule. And then Team Alpha, I see V2, I presume that's version two. Yes. All right, good. So you are judged out of 75. The winning team of the challenge with 58 out of 75 versus 19 out of 75 is Team Alpha version 2. Congratulations, well done. And the prize for each one of you this week is a DSTV PVR HD decoder. So I'm sure you're quite excited. A really awesome prize for you. You can leave the room. It's time for elimination for the other two. Half the questions we didn't get them. You know, and by the time it was like 30 minutes remaining, I was running, I was running, and he was running around. And how did you two work as, as a team? Well, I should say partnership, really, because they're just two of you. We communicated very well. I don't, I don't believe that. I believe there was quite a lot of arguing going on. Uh, no, it was just about uh, in terms of the answers. You well, know, that's you a can, huge part of the competition, surely. Yes, it is. It? But uh, when you, if I come up with, with with one answer, he comes up with a, with another answer. I mean, uh, and they they, co they contradict one another. We have to. Uh, Get to a consensus. It's quite a critical part of the competition this because after today we're down to four contestants which means you'll be competing individually against one another and not in teams anymore so the game changes quite a lot from here. I'd like to give each one of you an opportunity to just chat to the mentors and tell them why you think you should still be in the running for the CNBC Africa Top Trader for 2013. Starting with you Pule. I just want to be in the competition and Hopefully, when I do my own thing individually, I can get to prove that, get to show the ambition that I have and perform well in, in, in that situation when I know that it's all up to me and I'm not dependent on the performance of uh, my teammates. I'm only starting to get my rhythm. My portfolio value, if you track it, it's on an upward trend. It has experienced a reversal. <laughs> so I would say that me continuing would be really to give a couple of the guys are run for their money. We'll leave it to the mentors at this moment to deliberate. We'll call you back in in a couple of moments to find out who's going home. We put it so well in catching our emotions last time. He virtually told us why we should eliminate him. No, I'm just uh, annoyed with myself. He's made that big mistake in the trading also, you remember? Yeah. Yes. Where he uh, did not take his profit. I think I started on a, on a, on a good note and then it just turned bad, but then I've been applying what I've been learning. He still has a strongly competitive attitude. Mm. He's going to need it, but at least that's mm. something that's going to buoy him. 
and hopefully uh, you know, make it big one day. He certainly uh, has had the weaker portfolio performance. Yeah, um, and that's and quite a big difference, unlike in, the previous. In, in, indeed, indeed, quite a long way down. I'm emotional, but at the same time, deep down in my heart, I'm like, it's okay. They don't have to stress over this. You know, if you carry on, you have to kill it. Look, he's finding his rhythm late. He gives the impression that he's now in catch-up mode. Actually, I'm much calmer than straight after the challenge because I knew for a fact that I had lost. So I'm OK, I'm fine. Well, we have reached the decision. Uh, it wasn't as difficult as last time. I don't know if I'm ready. I hate to see any one of you go. I'm feeling quite emotional at this point. I think we all are because we've got to know you quite well. So it's very difficult. OK. Pule, Mbuso, it's the end of the road for one of you today. Sorry to see one of you leaving. It's been a tough competition and you've all had your ups and downs. Pule, Mbuso, you're safe Mbuso. Unfortunately, it's the end of the road today, Pule. You are not the CNBC Africa top trader for 2013. Say your goodbyes, everybody. Pule, oh, sorry to see you go. Pule, I'm so sorry. I can see you're very emotional. Sorry for myself. We've all had major disappointments in our life. I know this is big for you right now, but you did your best. Don't be hard on yourself. Come here. Come here. Stand up, come here. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Next time you'll be better. You'll be better. Okay. Be strong. Okay. Thank you. It was a big hit. I, I wouldn't have known who to decide between the two of them. So very unexpected. I think I blame my confidence because Pule heard the tone in my voice and the confidence didn't allow him to take the answer. We're going to miss him, you know. He's been our friend, he's been, we, we have become a family, all of us. We've grown now to be almost friends or colleagues in a sense. And I think that's going to be ending very soon uh, because obviously I'm not going to share or be friendly when I know that someone else is taking my position to potentially win 250,000 Rand, which is no joke.